All right. Well, hello and welcome, you guys. Welcome and hello. Today is Thursday yet again, which means which means that it is vlog day, you guys. And yeah, I got a full on vlog planned out for you tonight. We're doing the same thing tonight that we did last week. If everything went to a court, you know, if everything went according to plan, it should be shortly after 4.30 p.m. on Thursday afternoon. I should be over there in the chat, chatting it up with everybody. Gates open, come on in. Like I said, I got a full action-packed vlog for you guys tonight. I think we're going to be doing all of the segments. We're going to be starting off with some beer. We're going to be talking real quickly about what I've been vaping. I do have, uh, I have some mail. I have a bunch of mail. I have a bunch of mail and I have one package in there that's like, it's like a bigger package. Anyway, I got a bunch of mail that I'm excited about. If there's something in the mail, I'm going to set that up. But I also have a plan B because I got something in the mail I don't remember if it was the week last week or the week before, but I got something in the mail that I'd like to try to set up tonight, assuming that there isn't anything really like super cool, spectacular in the mail. In addition to that, we're gonna have some favorite comments of the week. Man, I enjoyed that so much last week. We're bringing favorite comments of the week back. I got a, uh, a retro vaping for sure. I got a very random liquid tasting as well. Another Indonesia juice, courtesy of Mr. Beecher Coil Turd. I got a great, retro vaping this week. I am really excited about this retro vaping this week. This week's retro vaping is going to require me to do a little bit of building, a little bit of round wire building. Timestamps, as always, will be the first pinned comment right underneath this video. And once again, Jeremy V, thank you for all your help. I, I appreciate you. Once again, you do have the night off tonight. So before we get too far into this vlog, I want to do that thing that is my new favorite thing where I get to hear from one of my subscribers. I, I don't know this dude's name, but the file, I just named it Gingerbeard. And I hope that's not like an insult to you, my man. It just says Gingerbeard. So what, what up, Gingerbeard? Grim Green, what's going on, my dude? Just up here in Canada, working away, watching your vlog. Hoping maybe I could get on your next vlog. Just wanted to say thank you for all that you do. We need all the help we can get lately. There's a lot of bullshit going on in the media. It's nice to have people like you fighting for our rights. Just wanted to say thank you. Thank you for getting me addicted to Pony on Acid. And Star Wars is life. Peace out. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Star Wars is life. And I like that little subtle like, well, maybe I could get on your next vlog. Absolutely, my man. I, I, I don't I don't recall your name and you didn't say your name and the file is just called Gingerbeard. So I hope that doesn't offend you. You're Canadian, though, so I feel like you're cool. Canadians are pretty chill. You know, in, in my experiences, Canadians are pretty chill, a lot like New Zealand. Just real chill, real cool. Everything's cool, man. And thank you so much for the kind words. And if anybody else out there has a video similar to Mr. Gingerbeard's that they'd like to see featured on this vlog, you can send them on over to me, nick at grimgreen.com. Just mark it, you know, that that one thing and you can shout out uh, your shop. You can talk talk the news. You want to talk about your, your setup. You want to talk about your RTA. Shout yourself out. Shout your friends out. Shout your family out. Shout your favorite juggler. People have favorite jugglers. I have a favorite juggler. So real quickly, I just wanted to talk about a few things that I have been vaping recently. I still have set up, obviously, the M-Turk and Coil Turd mouth to lung setups. Now, I don't know why I was so like infatuated with these and like flavor wise with these. I felt like I had to do two videos for it and I'm still vaping them. Like I'm still, still evaluating them. And like I said, in those videos, it's difficult, right? It's just difficult to compare Clapton's to aliens. They're both vaping. I mean, right now, as far as I'm concerned, they're both vaping fairly awesome. I mean, very awesome. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Turk, really good. Mm -hmm. Still really very good. Very good vapes. That six milligram dragon shake is delicious too, by the way. Still hanging in there with that clutch recoil combo. That's the uh, DHD metalhead drip tip on there. Got this loaded up with that... Uh, Super good. Lemon blueberry sponge cream. Really been on this kick lately. Really enjoying the super good. The clutch just hits so well. <laughs> still using this, still getting annoyed by this on a daily basis. This is a, a beautiful chromy hexome that uh, Thomas Crow had made that I bought from him. It says yo yo down the side of it. Death Trap uh, 30 millimeter Death Trap 2 RDA on top. 
I, I overdripped and it leaked and now there's liquid here and then there's like a big smudge on the back and I've kind of given up on on keeping this as shiny as I would like. Thankfully, it's still a vaping uh, really nice thanks to that giant Beecher coil in there, very down to the very last of my transistor Tango Melon, which is probably fine. This is a really good liquid and I really like vaping it, but it is not kind to coils. It's hard for me to vape a juice on the reg that isn't, you know, that really is a coil destroyer. You have to really, really like that juice to put up with being a coil destroyer, I think. Still hanging in there hard with the uh, Minikin Type 2 RTA combo. In fact, here, let's do a little uh, refill tutorial for the Type 2 RTA. It needs to be refilled. The liquid level is quite low. Top, one twist, off. Bleh. One twist, it's closed. and it's still banging flavor out. I got Dwayne's weird Indonesian liquid on the inside, Om Shake. This is one of those juices. I just had a conversation with Dwayne just the other day and he is, he's like, bro, I can't believe that you like that Om Shake. He's like, I never would have pegged that in a million years. I kept seeing his liquid, his Indonesian liquid, like all over Instagram. And I'm like, Om Shake, what the sh I wanna try that, I wanna try that. And I kept asking Dwayne, I was like, I wanna try Om Shake. Let me try that Om Shake. He's like, no, nah, bro, you don't, I don't think you're gonna, I'll send you some Om Shake. I don't think you're gonna like it. I, I love it. I don't know what it is. It's just something I needed, strawberry milkshake. Damn, it's just really good. And then lastly, this is just something I set up yesterday just because I was feeling so nostalgic. Uh, I grabbed my Titan, I grabbed a blue recoil RDA, and I put a I put an orange uh, DHD macaron drip tip on there and it kind of gives it like the, a little bit of like a Denver Broncos kind of feel. I mean, I may not be a big sports ball guy, but I definitely know that the Denver Broncos are orange and blue. And on the inside, just because I've been missing it so much. I cracked open one of the last bottles of Yig in existence on Earth. This juice really only gets better as it steeps. I think this has been steeping for December, January, February, three months now. It, it's perfect. This is perfect prime Yig. That's why I opened a bottle. Dang. So yeah, that's more or less what I've been vaping uh, recently. You know, I try to keep it streamlined, but I'm not good at that because I just like setting stuff up. I love setting setups up. I like grabbing a mod and doing up an RDA and putting a new liquid and just, yep, new, I love it. Putting new combos together, I just, I can't stop myself sometimes. And now what I think I wanna do, I've got one chilling in the fridge. Yep, yeah, it's beer time. Why didn't I shave? That's, I'm gonna shave. So much better. I feel like a new man. Beer that we're gonna be tasting tonight, Cast Iron Oatmeal Brown. This is another, uh, this is another Dalt. This is another Dalton Drippery beer from Four Hands Brewing, Cast Iron Oatmeal Brown. I set this beer aside specifically to do a beer pairing with Yig. I got Yig set up. I feel like this is gonna be great and I'm really looking forward to it. We're gonna be pouring this over nothing into a Guinness uh, pint glass. This was actually a gift from my brother years and years and years ago. I should say we're going to poorly pour this into a glass. Woohoo! Would you have a look at that? That's like a two and a half finger head right there. Cast iron oatmeal brown, cheers. Oh yeah. <sighs> Rad. It's very, very much like a brown ale. Every time I see the words brown ale, I just think of Newcastle and I compare everything to Newcastle. This is like, it's a brown ale. It's like Newcastle. It's like a darker, chocolatier, coffeeier -er -er Newcastle. Yeah, I do get a lot of that like upfront chocolate sweetness. It's got a nice big mouthfeel. It does have a little bit of carbonation to it or effervescence. But with how big the body is on this beer, the finish on it is very, very clean. Really clean finish. Um, love this. Digging it a lot. Now, let's get out the Yig. It's been a while, you know? It's been a while since I've had the old, uh, it's been a while since I've had the old Yig beer combo. Once upon a time, I mean for years, 
years of my life, Yig was the beer pairing juice. It was just what I chose every time. It has like that really perfect flavor profile that just pairs with a lot of beers. And I have a feeling this is gonna be uh, pretty spectacular. Yeah, good, really good. Really, very, very good. I've taken Yig so many places in my life, so many different vape events. I've taken Yig to Las Vegas so many times that when I have a Yig beer combination or like a Yig cocktail, Yig liquor combination, it instantly takes me back to like those places like Las Vegas. Remember when you were sitting in you know the, the Mandalay Bay at the table with the video poker and you were vaping Yig and you had a beer and that's exactly where my mind just went. Mm -hmm. Damn, damn hell ass good. What's the ABV on this? I know I'm not looking to get silly this afternoon. 5.5, that's not bad. 5.5, I can live with that. All right, dang, moving right along in this here vlog. So I guess the next thing that we have to get to, the I got mail, let's, let's open mail. I got a bunch of mail. Oh crap, and yeah, this. See a review for this on Wednesday? I'm still using it like crazy. Really love the mesh coil head. Really love the RBA base for this little Hitta. I just wish it wasn't named the Hitta. I, I just, I think that's kind of a dorky name and that's it. it, that's all. It's just kind of a dorky name. Otherwise, I really love the crap out of this thing. Mm -hmm. It's just really good. Okay, now, now we're gonna get to some packages. Now we're gonna get to some mail. This is one of the big ones that I have no idea. There's another one, thankfully, matching carpet to the rescue. Tiny little razor blade, matching carpet, thank you. I found it, I tracked it down. Oh, these are those disposables. Dang, 5%. 5% disposables, oh, it's just a little too much for me, but these are Rise. I don't even know if I'm allowed to show these on YouTube anymore. I have to, I have to at least try one of these. So these are Rise. Am I gonna get in trouble from YouTube? This is a, this is a nicotine disposable, okay? The reason that I would be showing this on YouTube is strictly and only for a currently addicted adult smoker to have a less harmful option. That's the only reason I would show this. This isn't for experimental youths. Get the fuck out. Not, knock that shit off. It's not for you, okay? Don't be fucking stupid. Rise. And this one's called Banana Ice, and I just want to try it. I have been off Salt Nick for a very long time now. I don't use pods with salt nick and i don't use salt nick in any pods at all especially especially 50 milligram the highest the absolute highest nicotine that i do right now is 12 milligram traditional nicotine and even then i have it in one device geek vape agius pod or agius pod which is killing the game right now i'm going to do a review for this very very soon but this is the only thing that i have 12 milligram in right now i want my nicotine intake to go down i just know overall i feel better as a human when i personally am ingesting less and less and lower and lower levels of nicotine. Everybody's different. Everybody needs different levels of nicotine. You know, this is one of those discussions that happens constantly about like nicotine caps. Oh, what's the point of 50 milligram nicotine? Well, the point is some people need 50 milligram nicotine in order to feel satisfied, in order for some people to not light up a combustible tobacco cigarette they're gonna need higher nicotine. And I don't think that we should be gatekeeping, uh, you know, what does and doesn't work for people. Cover up my blood blister. Don't wanna get in trouble with YouTube. That's a rise disposable. Of course it vapes fucking awesome. Of course it vapes fucking awesome. And uh, this banana ice, top notch. Don't wanna go back on 50 milligram salt nick nicotine. I just don't want to, I refuse. All right. Hey, these are good and I'm gonna send these to people. I hate, I hate that I'm timid about this right now simply because of the government, simply because of the powers that be, simply because of the stigma 
of vaping in the United States right now. The fact that YouTube will crack down on me. If I made a video, like a solo video for these Rise disposables on YouTube, done, done. The video would get pulled immediately. Maybe not immediately. It would take them a while to catch on, but this is something that you just simply can't talk about on YouTube anymore. And it's a real, real, real shame because of that, because of the government, because of the stigma associated with it, talking about these disposables, it just feels, I feel weird about it. And I shouldn't feel weird about it because I want an adult smoker to get these disposables. I want, I want that like, 40 year smoker to see this and go, what? Banana ice? I'll take a few. And then not smoke cigarettes after that. It's crazy to me how quickly and how thoroughly they changed the narrative of vaping in the United States from this wonderful harm reduction tool for smokers to this like taboo thing and ew and flavors and kids and disposables and juuling and let's it's bad and bad. I should be stoked to put these on YouTube. I should be saying, hey, every currently addicted adult smoker, here's another really great convenient option for you to not smoke combustible tobacco cigarettes. But instead I have to shamefully hide it on YouTube, hide it from the masses, from the media. You guys, this will help you quit smoking. Just, nope, we just can't tell you that. We just can't tell you that, but it's the truth. That is the truth. Holy fuck, this is a good pod. Here's what I say. If you're a uh, if you're a high neck salt user and you want disposables, <laughs> these rise are, are fairly dope. And I mean, I'm not used to this much nicotine. I can feel this nicotine coursing through my veins right now. And man, if I was, if I had got, if I had in 2009, when I was still a cigarette, combustible cigarette smoker, had been since the age of 13, if I had got one of these in 2009, I would have switched from cigarettes immediately. No questions asked. There would have been no dual use, which, is just a sometimes a thing that happens. Not everybody can switch immediately from combustible tobacco cigarettes to vapor products. There's always a little bit of like that adjustment period. You know, that's why we have the community. That's why we have things like this. That's why we have YouTubers and things to help. Counseling is a huge part of making that switch. And I've always viewed the vaping community and, and you know, YouTubers and things like this and forums and Reddit as part of that support group. People come with questions. This isn't working. My RTA isn't working. This liquid tastes bad. And people help. People say, this could be your thing. Here could be your problem. Here, try this. And in 2009, if someone had come up to me and said, here, try this. It's banana ice and it'll satisfy you like a cigarette. Switched, no questions asked. These, these rise bars, as vilified as they are, disposables, even vapors now, even a lot of vapors now kind of look down their noses at high nicotine disposables. Even though, not to sound like a broken record, the, the point of them is to help smokers. That is the point of them. Okay, rant over, and there's a bunch of them. Okay, yeah. Dude, even seriously, even just a few pulls on that rise after not having 50 milligram for months and months, it is intense. That is a that is a lot. That is that is that is a very very satisfying amount of nicotine. What say you, Jim Johnson? Oh, oh, Jim. Okay, uh, this is something I can't show on video. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Not even a little bit. Yeah, not even a little bit. Okay, thank you, Fred. I'm gonna get back to you as soon as possible. This is from someone named Joel. What say you, Joel? Okay. Mystery bag. What are you? Oh, shit. Oh, shit. All right, well. Remember how I said if there's nothing cool in the uh, vape mail, then we're gonna set up this uh, this other thing. There is something cool in the vape mail. This is the newest blue-eyed goon RDA. Why the narrow bore drip tip? 
That is a really narrow board drip tip. This is the Rye RDA New Dripper from Blue Eyed Goon. What's with this drip tip? What's with this really, really small chamber drip tip? It's got a really interesting AFC. There's slot that you can open up as well as holes on the bottom that you can open up independently of the slot or you can kind of rock everything open. The deck is a big two post deck. There's actually lots going on in this deck. I was reading about this RDA recently. They call it like a pitcher's mound on the inside. So the inside of the deck is actually rounded so that your liquid flows to the outer edge rather than staying in the middle in that spit back zone, right? I'm really fascinated by this RDA. I like Sean. I like Blue Eyed Goon. I love the Goon. In fact, I have a Goon Titanium all ready to go for my very random liquid tasting. I've been vaping the Goon a lot more recently. Oh, look at this. Look at this cap. Look at like the slam cap. This is like a full a full airflow open cap. This is the non-adjustable airflow cap with like a really big bore drip tip. Ultem, there is an Ultem cap as well. You're just gonna have to look at my blood blister there and I'm sorry. Kind of like an Ultem cap and a media blasted cap. This is still stainless, I believe. It's heavy in like a heavy stainless steel kind of way. All right, shit, well, uh, we're definitely gonna build this. We're definitely gonna set this up today in this vlog. Okay, so there's another uh, big wider bore drip tip. A weird narrow bore drip tip doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Comes with another 810. All right, kick ass. Spare screws, spare O-rings. I like that he put the spare O-rings and spare screws in one of those, you know, little plastic uh, like coils that you get coils from M-Turk in, that little container. So much better. Yeah, I'm having more of the banana. Okay, you can read this on the vlog. Nick, hello and yo yo, my name is Kevin and I am not a liar. I didn't forget about sending your beer, just got real busy with work and COVID stuff going on. To look, Kevin, totally, completely understandable. I wanna say thank you for all you do for this wonderful vaping community. You're a testament and inspiration to all of us and to those who watch us. So here is a variety of things, four different beers, coffee from my local roaster, two Star Wars figures, and a bottle of juice I think you'll enjoy, and my setup that got me off smokes for good. Kevin, holy crap, this is awesome. First, the setup, mod and RDA. The RDA is modified. I am a machinist. This is what gave me my vape epiphany. You can use it as a retro vape, keep it for a while, or send it to someone who may be in need. Consider it a birthday gift. Ah! Second, the Star Wars figure. Uh, Zach wanted you to have them because you love Star Wars, like, you like metal music and you're cool as hell. He's nine years old and special needs. Zach, oh, thank you for the Star Wars figure, Zach. Lastly, coffee and beer. Thank you for all you do, enjoy. Please give a shout out to my son, Zach. Absolutely, Zach. My daughters, Peyton and Cheyenne. Peyton, Cheyenne, Zach, bump the screen. And to my wife, and I always keep on vaping. My wife, I can't read your handwriting or I'm, I'm I'm just bad at reading. My wife, E, 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 that's E. That's okay, Kevin. You know what? I have bad handwriting too. <laughs> P.S. <laughs> Sorry for the sloppy handwriting. <laughs> ah, thought if you, uh, thought what if the Cool Kids Club members sent you in setups to highlight, oh, peer review, then others can pay then others can pay shipping to use these setups after a few yo-yoys get them. Oh, that's actually a pretty good idea. Then back to the original owner, just an idea. Stay safe, catch you later. Dude, that's a good idea, Kevin. I appreciate that, Kevin. Well, damn it, let's get into this. Coffee, yo-yoy, raised locally, roasted locally. Steamwhistlecoffee.com. We specialize in organic fair trade coffees roasted in small batches. Oh, a Sumatra, dude. I love a good Sumatra coffee. Wait, you sent me your Revenant? You sent me your Revenant and an original recipe recoil? Holy crap. This is the setup? This is the setup that got you off of cigarettes? Oh, this is your modified RDA. Wait, what did you do to it? Did you rant? What did you do? You changed the top cap. Oh, you gave it an 810. Oh, holy crap. Bro. You gave a recoil, original recipe recoil, an 810 connection with an internal O-ring. That's, uh, 
Fuck, that's cool, man. <laughs> I love that. Dude, that's awesome. I'm gonna use that. And you sent me your freaking Revenant? Bro. That Revenant though. I really intensely, intensely appreciate this, man. Dude, this could be a traveling setup. I'm gonna build that and I'm gonna vape it. And I wanna vape, I wanna vape that. Oh, there be beers ahead. Malaco milk stout. A Malaco milk stout from Three Floyds. A dark breed black IPA. Yeah, Tropic. Thunder Pineapple IPA, Foggy Geezer IPA, and look at the art on this can. Dude, that's metal AF. Oh yeah, and there's a bottle of liquid. Berry Milk Pie. I used to vape the Buttermilk Pie from this same company ages ago, years ago, like 2016 I think. I went on a big Buttermilk Pie kick. So I I'm really excited for this Berry Milk Pie. In fact, next week, very random liquid tasting. We got some berry milk pie from Kevin. Oh gosh. I love these. Zach, thank you for the Star Wars figures. I love Phasma. I love Han Solo. Thank you. Thank you, Zach. These are the coolest. Where can I put them? There you go. Can't quite see them? Yeah, can't quite see them. It's all right, Phasma and Han Solo are up there next to my original trilogy Blu-rays as well as my uh, Kylo Ren helmet. All right, well kick ass. All right, well, dang, we got through all the mail. Thank you very much, Kevin. Like I said, next week, berry milk pie for the very random liquid tasting. And what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna, I'm gonna set up and build this Rye RDA. It's here, I'm not gonna not build it. So here we go, it's just a uh, two post. RDA, it's got kind of a weird diamondy shaped squared off posts, uh, grub screws in the top. It's got some uh, fairly large post holes right there. I am confident in putting anything in there. So I grabbed out an old pair of Fiends framed, nope, Fiends Fused Clapton, the V2 Fused. These should come out between a 0.3 and a 0.25, that's kind of what I'm looking for, I'm gonna be running this on a regulated device. This is that BMI Grim Army, you know, one of one brass version of the touch that I love so much. Get some tools here. Where's my tweezers, cotton. Ooh, what liquid should I put in this? I guess we don't have to decide right now. I want something summery. I want something summery, so we're gonna go with this other super good liquid that Kent really got me into at uh, Vapor Expo UK. Super good Pear Fizz Champagne Pear Lime. We've had this before. We've tasted this before on the vlog many times. Oh, these Fiends Fuse Claptons are not gonna be, they're not gonna go the distance. There's a fairly big distance between these two posts. Oh, that'll work. Yeah, that'll be fine. Uh, installing them, not too, not not terribly bad, not difficult. Uh, it's just a two post, so you have to make sure that your wraps can span the distance between the two posts. These Fiends uh, Claptons were a little bit on the short side, but I, I got them in there. Got them in there with honestly very little effort. Yeah, not terribly difficult. I just have to glow them now. They came out to a 0 0.23, not bad. Glowing fairly evenly there. Real easy to wick. Real big juice well in there. Real easy to tuck your wicks down. I cut my wicks down pretty short in this so that I could just kind of tuck them down and so that the ends where you cut are kind of bent down just touching the bottom of the deck there. I think that's gonna be the best way to go about this. It has that like that pitcher's mound deck on the inside that I keep hearing people talk about where it's raised. So. I already explained this, but the idea is you drip your liquid down, it's gonna go away from the center towards your wicks. And when you have that big opening right down the middle, when you have two posts in your wicks, I mean, you have a big opening, a big hole right down the bottom. It's gonna go straight to the bottom of the deck. These came out to a 0.23, so I'm gonna turn the wattage up to in between like mm, 65 watts. Let's go like between 65 and 70 watts. 6 to 6.6 .6 watts. Now, kind of more interesting than the deck to me on this RDA is the airflow because objectively I look at the airflow from the outside just the design of the holes in the slot and I kind of go I don't like that I don't like the way that looks but that's not what matters what matters is the way that it vapes so full open three circles open on the bottom and no slot open I have a feeling this is just gonna be a lot of like 
Airflow fiddling. It's going to be a matter of finding the airflow that you like the most. There's no tabs on the barrel either, so you can actually position the airflow right in front of your coils. You're not sort of locked in like that. There's always a better idea in my opinion. I'm going to put this uh, big black Delrin drip tip on here rather than the very restricted airflow sort of uh, drip tip. It makes for some nice airflow. Th that restricted airflow drip tip. See right there? Very narrow. Just Real narrow. I'm interested to see how it vapes or how it affects the airflow even. All right, cheers. Let's just give it a shot. Very flavorful. Really restricts the airflow down like, whoa. Okay, so three holes with the regular 810 opens up that airflow quite a bit. Very nice draw, very, very, very nice draw. That's just with the bottom row of holes all the way open. Dude, you can really dial this in. You can open the holes along the bottom and slowly open the slot along the top while keeping the bottom airflow holes all open. Dude, you can really dial this airflow in. Very flavorful, very, very nice and smooth airflow. All right, let's open this pit all the way up. There's full airflow, full open bottom dots, full slot open. There'll be so many slots there. Remember uh, Beavis and Butthead do America? A funny movie. Uh, full open is, uh, is very cloud chasey, very just big open swooshy airflow. The dots and the slot kind of uh, pull down the smoothness a little bit. It gets a little bit more rough when you have it full open. Now, I just want to try just the slot. There it is. Just the slot open now. Okay, well, we've done a few of the airflow configurations. There's literally, I mean, multitudes to choose from. You can open certain holes along the bottom. You can open certain distances of slots along the top. You can have a combination of the both. You can have full open, close the slot down a little, open the slot open, maybe just have a hole on the bottom. Lots of different airflow configurations and they're all, you know, you're gonna have to just, people are just gonna have to pick, pick their own one, their own favorite. I love that you can dial it in like that. The slot itself, not terrible, not great, not terrible. Dude, okay, so. Let's figure this out. Where do I like my airflow? Let's try this. Look at that. This is a weird airflow that you can just do with the Rye RDA. So we've got the slot open just a little, and then we have these two holes open over there. And? Real smooth, real restricted. I think I like just the straight up four holes open on the bottom. I think right now that's my preferred airflow on the rye. With the 810, all the holes open on the bottom, that's the way to go. The last thing I wanna try on this rye RDA is everything full open, but with that restricted drip tip. Because why not? I don't know. What's going to happen? <laughs> what? It's like, a, it's like a vapor and flavor concentrator drip tip. You'd have to turn your wattage down if you're going to use this drip tip. 0.22 at 66 watts might seem fine if you have a normal 810 drip tip in there. But if you're going to rock this sort of restricty drip tip, I would turn the wattage way down. 48 watts. Ah, smooth, much more enjoyable, very nice flavor. Dang, all right, well look, I don't know if I can get on board with this little drip tip, but I like that it's included. 
I really like that. It's like an extra like, look, here's your 810. Here's how you're used to doing things. This will be familiar to you. But also, just for the hell of it, here's a weird fucking tiny little pinhole drip tip. Just because, because why not? Just try it. I almost included a just try it drip tip with my RTA, but decided, ultimately decided against it. It was kind of something a little bit similar. Anyway, I like that that was included. I want to find my own drip tip for this though. Does yellow look super dorky on here? I don't know, maybe. Let's open up that airflow. Let's drip some liquid. So there you go. It's the Rye RDA. This is the newest jam from Blue Eyed Goon, creator of The Goon RDA, which we're going to vape in just a little bit when we get to a very random liquid tasting. Thank you, Fiends, for the coils that got installed in the Rye RDA. Thank you, Super Good, for the liquid in this Rye RDA. And thank you, Sean, for this Rye RDA. Bottom airflow open. I think that's where I'm landing with this right now. Bottom airflow open only. Let's turn the wattage back up. 0.22 at 66 watts with that bottom airflow open. Damn near perfect. Cheers. It's just so smooth and so good and so consistently resistant. I, that's a completely new phrase I think I just made up, but the airflow feels very consistently resistant. I can't think of any other way to say it. You know how sometimes, I'm just gonna clean up here real quick. You know how sometimes on airflows, on RDAs, the, it, it'll feel a little bit different depending on maybe how hard you're pulling on it even if it's a non-adjustable AFC or even if it is an adjustable AFC and you got it really dialed in, it can change depending on how hard you pull on it. And this doesn't seem to be affected by that somehow. It just feels awesomely smoothly consistent. Man, I don't know what's going on on the inside of this. Maybe it's the Fiends, Fuse Clapton's, I'm just getting a uh, bang and flavor, bang and flavor from this right now. Banging, banging rye RDA. All right, cool. Well, obviously I'm gonna spend a lot, lot. Oh man, that drip tip doesn't fit on there. My nub don't fit. This spoon is too big. I am a banana. Anybody remember those? Dude, that warmth is crazy. That warmth and flavor, so nice. All right, cool. Well, Rye RDA, I'm gonna spend obviously a lot more time with this RDA before it gets a full, full sort of review type of video here on YouTube or Instagram or grimgreen.com or wherever I post my videos before it gets a full video. I'm gonna spend a lot more time with it. A lot more time with it. Well, shoot, I think it's almost getting to that time Almost lunchtime, dang, we're creeping up on lunchtime. So what I'd like to do right now is I'm just gonna set this Rye RDA to the side. I'm gonna clear off my desk a little bit and then we are going to, uh, we're gonna jump right into some news and advocacy. News and advocacy, yeah. All right, well here we go with some news and advocacy. Unfortunately, the news and advocacy is always just, it's like the bummer of the vlog. It's important. Look, it's important, it's critical information. This is good information for us to have, for us to communicate, for us to discuss. But it always seems like it's just a bummer, especially, now. it just seems like it's just constantly, constantly getting worse. You know, it used to be bad when you think about like, oh, 2016 and that was bad and they were coming down on vaping and then 2017 and the epidemic and then it was, you know, it was bad and they're coming down on vaping and it just keeps getting worse. And even now during quarantine, lockdown, COVID-19, as we've talked about many, many times, there's still political opportunists using this time to just jam through their own little agendas. And I posted a tweet about this on Twitter recently, but this article is from ABC News. This is what House Dems have been doing, wasting time and wasting money pushing through a flavor ban. House approves a bill to ban the sale of flavored e-cigarettes. It's honestly enough to just make you insane. Like during, right now, during this time, quarantine, COVID, people are on unemployment. Like the, the country is in a little bit of a serious state. It's a little bit of a national emergency. And rather than spend time or energy or money addressing this sort of national emergency that's going on, House Dems 
still are trying to ban flavored vapor products. And I just, you know, you, you get to that point where you kind of go, how more, how, how much more angry can I get? How much more upset can I possibly get? Vapors and vaping just get constantly attacked, constantly mocked, constantly ridiculed. And it's the same like tired and boring complaints from me like over and over and over again. They just constantly are using these big broad sweeping statements. There's, you know, there is subtlety to this discussion. There is a little bit of nuance to this discussion, but all we get are these big sweeping statements. Vaping, bad. More than 6 million American and high school students used some type of tobacco product last year. That right there is one of the most just oddly vague statements that, you know, that I've ever seen. Some type of tobacco product last year? Some type of tobacco product? And is this flavor ban going to keep six million youths from using some type of tobacco product? Or is this flavor ban going to make the most successful quit smoking aid in the history of time less appealing to the smokers that actually, actually need it? I feel like I just, I just come to the same conclusion every single time. Time. It's like, oh, yep, here's a terrible article based on no information, using no data and no science, and they just want to push push their flavor ban through whether you want it or not. It's like ideas so good, they're mandatory. How many people in the United States quit smoking with, uh, with vaping? Millions? Ban it. And you can't help but feel constantly, constantly defeated. Constantly defeated. I've been trying my best for years and years and years to educate and inform and you know empower people to to be the change. You know, it's it's cliche, but I don't care. You have to be the change you want to see in the world. And you spend years and years trying to educate politicians or trying to educate the Surgeon General or getting you know or protesting in front of the White House, and we just get the same hogwash, lame duck responses back over and over again. Nobody knows what this technology is. Nobody cares to learn. Their their default position is to ban it, which I don't care which side of vaping you're on. No one should be okay with that. No one should be okay with the government's default position on things is just to ban them. Also, stay hydrated, hydro homies. You gotta take care of that rage sweat. We should just call the ban what it is. It's not a government ban on flavored nicotine products. It's a government created illicit black market. So, you know, house Dems just uh, wasting your time, wasting your tax dollars, and there's nothing you can do about it because they are ignorant to harm reduction and vaping, and they seem to be completely unwilling to learn. The National CASA call to action, hashtag essential to us, Yes, still going on. Mentioned it last week, mentioned it the week before, probably the week before that. I'm mentioning it today. We're probably gonna mention it next week as well. Hashtag essential to us. I'll have a link in the chat right now. Someone, someone has that link in the chat right now and I will also have that link in the description of this video. But go to the website, follow CASA, follow the call to action. Governors need to hear from consumers about how important it is to maintain access to vapor shops, especially in times of crisis. Under high stress with limited options, it is very likely that we will see hundreds of thousands of people going back to smoking. It's crazy to me that any anybody in public health or any politician could hear that, could hear that, look, if you close vape shops, hundreds of thousands of people will go back to smoking. I don't know how how politicians and health committee members and, and these body part orgs can hear that and then just, that's, that's fine. Don't, don't care, don't care. You might be lying, don't care. I don't know how some of these people sleep at night. I mean, seriously, it's almost comical. Like you get to the point where the rage sweat just dissipates and it becomes comical. You look at politicians and you go, you are a comedy to me. So like I said, I will have that link down in the description as well. It's probably in the chat as well already right now. I also wanted to mention uh, SB810 happening in uh, Florida. Florida, SB810 is just a full on just vape ban, just full on vape ban. And looking through the history of SB810, it was introduced, I mean, it looks like they moved really quickly on this. It was only introduced in November 
of 2019. It's made it. It's made its way through the Senate. It got into the House in March. You know when the COVID pandemic was kind of really hitting hard, and a lot of people were getting their stay in home, you know, shelter in place orders. They voted on it on March 12th, smack dab in the middle of. COVID-19 quarantine, stay at home orders, political opportunists in Florida not changing their gaze, not changing their focus, pandemic COVID happening all around them in Florida. No, we have to vote on SB 810 so that we can ban vaping. That's where their priorities are. And I ran across this really great video, really spectacular video from the Vapor Technology Association. I have not got their permission to show it, but I'm just gonna show it because it's so great and I want people to see it. A crisis, Florida's economy crippled by the virus. Now, Senate Bill 810 banning flavored vapor heads to the governor. If it becomes law, 4,500 jobs lost, 800 small businesses closed, gone forever. What's worse, this flavor ban eliminates already regulated products that help millions quit smoking. Tell Governor DeSantis, veto Senate Bill 810. Don't create another public health crisis by sending Floridians back to cigarettes and to the black market. That is a spectacular little ad. I love the crap out of that Vapor Technology Association. It is just hard numbers, cold hard data, 4,500 jobs lost, 800 businesses shut down in the middle of a pandemic. Is this what the governor of Florida really wants for his state? Does he want to be known as the governor that during a pandemic put an additional 4,500 people out of work and closed down an additional 800 businesses in his state? He knows that unemployment is at a national all-time high right now, right? Governors are falling under fire uh, almost in every state, and it makes me makes me really happy. I like it when people are distrusting of the government. I like it when people don't trust their governors. I like that there are people protesting in Michigan right now in front of Governor Whitmer because she just went too far. And I, look, I don't want to go on a rant right now about Governor Whitmer in uh, in Michigan because this is really about SB, SB 810 in Florida. I'm going to post a link in the description uh, to this tweet, to the vapor technology, to this video. Share it, watch it, share it everywhere, retweet it out. Uh, if we, I mean, it would be incredible. This would be an incredible win if we could get Governor Ron DeSantis to veto this in Florida. Veto SB 810. Because Governor Ron DeSantis, you don't want to be known as the governor that put an additional 4,500 people out of work during a pandemic and closed down 800 businesses in your state during a pandemic. It's just not a good look. Unless you want protesters, you know, unless you want protesters out in front of your building like Governor Gretchen Whitmer, she went so far in Michigan as to tell Target, this is crazy. This is crazy government overreach, crazy authoritarian type of actions happening. She told Target that they can't sell certain things in the store. They can only sell essentials only sell essentials. So if you want to go to Target, you want a spatula, sorry, you want a, a, a candle, you want a scented candle because your cat box room smells bad. Definitely not. In Michigan, Gretchen Whitmer says that you can't go buy a candle at Target because it's not essential. That is crazy authoritarian government overreach crazy government authoritarian overreach. Even during a pandemic, I'm sorry, you don't get to do that, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. I had a few more things that I wanted to mention here. There is a survey happening right now, a COVID-19 vape survey. Scientists need help from vapors of the world. I will be putting a link to this in the description of this video, and it's a quick survey. You can just you fill it out. This is set up by the uh, University of Barcelona. I know Vaping with Vic over there. Vaping with Vic. I know he had his hand in helping uh, kind of get the ball rolling on this and help organizing this. Bellevue, Hosp Bellevue, nope. Belvitage, 
Belvitage? Wow, that is a fancy sounding hospital name. As you know, a terrible situation regarding COVID-19 is being taken advantage of by the usual anti-tobacco harm reduction lobbies to continue carrying out campaigns of harassment and destabilization against vaping. During the last week, headlines around the world are scaring vapors and smokers by claiming without scientific evidence that vapors and smokers are more likely to become infected with SARS-CoV-2 virus. Since it is obvious that not all vapors have been tested for COVID-19, we can only rely on the symptoms of this population group to obtain a possible relationship between vaping and SARS-CoV-2 infection. The conclusions of this data will therefore only be solid if the sample size is as large as possible. We are asking all international vaping groups to please collaborate by asking their colleagues to take this survey in collaboration with the universities mentioned before. The survey will also obtain data on the mobility and behavior of the general population in order to model possible expansions of the virus in the medium term. So we will also be collaborating with scientists and providing them very useful information in the fight against the virus. The survey won't take more than two minutes out of your schedule, hence we are requesting maximum participation. If you're using your cell phone to fulfill the survey, switch from vertical to horizontal mode. Just a, just a little pro tip there. So yeah, big old survey, and the more people we can get on it, the better the data will be in the end. So I'm gonna put a link to this down in the description, probably in the, in the, in the chat right now, but definitely down in the description for everybody to fill out. It's gonna take two minutes, going to be a big help. And I guess lastly, one of the things I wanted to mention here uh, comes from Vice News. This comes uh, courtesy of Alex Norcia. Alex Norcia has been reporting on vaping and tobacco control since September 11th, 2019. Like when that whole thing happened and we all remember it, Donald Trump sitting there, the people are dying. And as Vice News has reported here, FDA admits there's actually no evidence vaping makes COVID-19 worse. This information was just out there and I don't know where it really stemmed from or really where it really came from just one day out there on the internet it was like people were saying oh, smoking smoking and vaping make COVID worse that's just we're saying that now and large health organizations were also saying this the FDA was saying this smoking and vaping make COVID-19 worse the problem is apparently they were basing it on no evidence. The Food and Drug Administration has backtracked on its previous hardline position on vaping and the coronavirus, saying on Wednesday that there is no known evidence that vaping put an individual higher risk of developing complications tied to COVID-19. However, the federal agency continued to warn that smoking cigarettes did pose a danger. Which is honestly kind of still an interesting thing for them to say. It seems it seems pretty straightforward. It seems like something that you wouldn't even argue with. You go, oh, okay, COVID-19, yeah, it's a respiratory infection. Sure, smokers who have definite upper respiratory damage, definitely, right? No, no brainer, two and two. If you're a smoker, an upper respiratory virus, you smoker, you're gonna be more, you know, you're gonna have worse symptoms because you're gonna be more susceptible to this disease, to this virus. The facts of the matter is there's actually not even much science that shows that smoking makes COVID-19 any worse. The logic of your brain goes, yeah, smoking, okay, I can see that. That would, probably could make it worse, right? Probably, not outside of the realm of possibility. But the actual cold, hard data, the science itself, doesn't really show that. And one of the reasons I love reading Alex Narcia's articles on Vice is he always goes to the, the people that you wanna hear from, people like, Greg Conley. The FDA deserves no applause for eventually arriving at the right public stance, which is that there is no evidence linking the use of nicotine vaping products to COVID-19 infection or severity. Gregory Connolly, the president of the American Vaping Association, told Vice. It was wholly irresponsible for the FDA to add fuel to the fire several weeks ago by commenting on a subject that they now admit they knew nothing about. And apparently the FDA even making this claim, even passively saying that smoking and vaping, oh, it makes you more a severe risk for COVID-19, even just that one little statement, well, it got Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller fired up enough to just send off a letter to the FDA. And obviously I'm not gonna be able to read this entire letter in this vlog. And look, if I had the time, if I had the time to, I, I definitely would because it's great. It is scathing. That's I guess that's how I would describe it, scathing. Scathing and very much 
Like, you can just imagine Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller at the FDA going, just shut up. Stop. Stop it. Just shut up. So I'll have a link down in the description to this Vice article as well as the letter from Iowa Attorney General Tom Miller to the FDA that I would highly, it's its great. It's a great letter. I highly, highly suggest reading the whole thing. And I want to just say one last thing, Matt Cully. Matt Cully has a great quote in here. I'm glad the FDA has decided to walk back on their statement, unlike many others in public health that are using a pandemic to further their unscientific war on vaping. Unfortunately, like we saw last year with Evoli misinformation, the damage is already done, and this will hurt tobacco harm reduction efforts in the long term. Yeah, I mean, absolutely, Matt. Great quote. Obviously, we completely agree with you. It's not only, the damage hasn't already been done, it's been done and it's continuing to get done. It's the damage isn't the damage isn't stopping. The damage isn't slowing down. We keep climbing up shit mountain with just and with more shit just pouring down shit mountain on top of us. And like I always say, you know, my, my only hope, my only real hope is that some point soon, maybe not soon, but some point in the future, science has to win. The data has to win, right? It just has to. And I'm hoping that all of these organizations like the World Health Organization and the American Lung Association and the American Cancer Society and Jerome Adams and Stanton Glantz and Donald Trump and Stephen Hahn and Gottlieb, I want them to all be held accountable. I don't want them punished you know, I don't want them, you know, no calls to violence or anything like that. I just mostly want them to feel foolish. I want other people to point that out to them. In the future, when nobody is smoking cigarettes and it is taken for a universal truth that vaping is less harmful for you, when we inevitably get there, I want all of these people right now that are fighting tooth and nail against vaping to feel foolish. Or maybe every smoker that switches to vaping just gets to pick one, you know, walk up, like walk up to Gottlieb and just punch it, you know, right in the gut. Just that's for keeping me smoking for a few extra years. No, 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 no. Of course not. No violence. Come on. So as always, there's just a lot going on. I, uh, I'm going to do my best as always to try to inform you of everything that's going on and news and advocacy and try to keep everybody uh, as knowledgeable and, and up to date as, as possible. Well, you know, it's kind of getting to be that time. It's lunch time for me now here in the vlog time. So I'm gonna go eat lunch, but I think when we come back, we're gonna do exactly what we did last week. When we come back, we are going to do, what did we do last week? That's right, retro vaping. Go. Well, lunch was just fantastic. Thank you so much for asking. I had tuna pasta. Uh, it's just a thing that, that Casey Pickle makes, and it's it's exactly what it sounds like. It's pasta cooked, and then you make tuna salad, and then you kind of take the pasta and you put it in a bowl, and then you throw some cheese on it, uh, shredded cheese, and then you throw some tuna on top, stir it up, eat it with a fork, awesome. But we're not here to talk about lunch. We're here to retro vape. So the retro vaping that we have today I'm, I'm really very excited about it. I have been digging through a bunch of my, uh, you know, a bunch of my vape stuff. I've always kept track of all of my old vape stuff. It all ends up in boxes, poorly labeled boxes, but it still ends up in boxes. In this case, this stuff ended up in uh, tackle boxes, like tackle box trays. I, I'm sure, I'm sure I've shown them to you, but what we're gonna be retro vaping today, you see what that says right there? Yeah, Kennedy, RDA. This isn't just any Kennedy. This is a V1 Kennedy RDA. I'm gonna say vintage 2014, I believe, was when the first uh, first Kennedys came out. The V1 Kennedy had a completely different airflow. If you look at the bottom of this, you can see that the airflow went straight through, all the way straight through to the bottom. And on the inside of the Kennedy deck were those tubes. They were like airflow tubes. This was just a really bizarre design when it came out at the time. Nobody really even knew what to think of it. I didn't know what to think of it. I was looking at the Kennedy and you can see straight through the deck, straight to just, you know, open air. You can look through those holes and go right to the bottom. And I'm thinking, well, that's just going to leak, right? That's 
Like it looks like it was designed specifically to leak. It does have those tubes on the inside and didn't leak. In fact, this original Kennedy is such a throwback. It's so vintage that the airflow, hang on, the airflow slots, the airflow holes aren't even centered like they are on Kennedy's of the modern time or really on any modern RDA. Bottom in airflow is always centered. I mean, even going back way back to like the Geek Vape Tsunami, same idea, bottom airflow was always centered. Well, the bottom airflow on this, because it's a three post is offset. So you got a nice three post deck right there and then yep, completely offset set airflow. So the idea was you didn't need to center your coils on a three post deck. You could just install your leads and leave your coil kind of hanging out to the edge. And it didn't really matter if your coil was kind of hanging out to the edge over there because it had its own airflow hole right underneath it also hanging out over there on the edge. So I'm going to be throwing this on my Axis Vapes M17. Also, I mean, could be considered a retro vape. I'm gonna get some wire, I'm gonna get some uh, cotton, and I'm just gonna build some old school round wire. You know, it's basically gonna be a Ruby build. I'm probably gonna do a seven wrap of 24 gauge nichrome on a two and a half or three millimeter. Two and a half millimeter seems to be like my default build. Whenever I wanna put something on an RDA, I'm always thinking two and a half millimeter. Two and a half millimeter is usually perfect. And I think I got that from Turk because all his shit is two and a half millimeter. I think I'm gonna do a three millimeter coil this time. Son of a bitch. I just pierced my finger with uh, niachrome, anarchist wire. Man, that just went straight in perfectly. It was like a needle. It was like a syringe, just whoop, whoop, in and out. Fuck that hurt. Fuck you, anarchist wire. So yeah, like I said, three millimeter, damn. These post holes are almost big enough. Like you could fit a Clapton in there. You could fit some fancy builds in there. It's a real old school post design in that the posts are round and then the holes cut out of them are also rounded. A lot of the times on these rounded holes, what you get is a little lip sometimes just because of the way it's machined because on the post you have to not only bore out the post hole but you have to bore out the threads as well and where those two chambers kind of meet on the inside of the post, it creates a little lidge. A lidge? Lidge. That's what happens when you combine lip and ridge. You get a lidge. And it kind of creates just a little lidge right there. And back in the day, you used to have issues with posts like this because you could tighten down your screw too far and it would just clip your wire. The post itself would clip your wire. I'm not saying that's what's going to happen today. I'm just saying with these, you know, old school designs of RDAs, something you have to, you know, keep in mind when you're building it. Well, this is kind of coming together. It's uh, it was a little bit more difficult than I remember, man. I haven't built some, uh, I haven't built round wire builds in a while, like dual coils, especially in a triple post RDA. There's just so some, there's just something so satisfying about about nice clean round wire builds, especially with uh, like thicker wire, like a 22 gauge round wire, 22 gauge builds. I love came out to a point. To six, just a real simple round wire build. And you can see you don't need to center your coils. You just place your coils right over that little tube, that little airflow tube, and then that's it. It just looks like an old school build. But the Kennedy always vaped like a champ, even from the very first iteration. I'm gonna try to go back in my YouTube videos. It shouldn't be that difficult to find my review of the original, original Kennedy. And I remember it wasn't just the original Kennedy, there was another, another cap. What was the other cap? The, the, the hell cap, the hellfire cap? goat horn cap what was that called i don't know i can't remember it i just have a bad memory also really very easy to wick kennedy's have never been difficult to wick with kennedy's you've never had to do the like uh you know tuck your wicks underneath where you kind of have to do that weird dance with tucking the cotton and poking and pushing it underneath there that's not the way that his rdas were designed his rdas are designed to cut your wicks short right next to the deck and just literally press them down, just straight down. On this type of three post deck, when one of your coils is really far off to the side and it's not centered, which is 
which is rare. Apart from this Kennedy V1, you're not gonna run into this really anywhere. Maybe on a tugboat, but even then, if you had a really old tugboat, you can still twist your airflow and, and move it to your coils. You don't have to move your coils in front of the airflow. But I got it wicked and it looks something like that. I think we're gonna go for an old reliable today, Pony on Acid. If I think about it, I don't know if I ever vaped Pony on Acid in an original Kennedy, in an original Kennedy V1. I know for sure I've had Pony on Acid in multiple other Kennedys, including, you know, his new, that big 28 millimeter guy. Nice. This Kennedy one is such an old school RDA. I would, I would argue that the tugboat and the Kennedy were like the two biggest, most important, like pivotal hard pieces of hardware that came out in like those silver age of vaping years between like 2013 and 2015. It is such an old school feeling RDA. Look at this. 510 drip tip, 510 on an RDA. I mean, that's that just seems so crazy now considering you know all the RDAs we have now are all 810. I mean, 810 became the standard, I mean, years ago, right? I feel like we've all been using 810, everything's 810, 810, 810, 810, 810, especially on drippers, you know? Especially on like a cloud chasey RDA, 810. But no, this is so old school. It's got a 510 drip tip on it. Kennedys have always been, in my opinion, pop and paint RDAs. They, they basically created the term pop and paint. I created the term pop and paint strictly for the Kennedy. And it's still mostly a pop and paint RDA. Steve would always give me a really hard time. He'd always give me shit when he saw me doing that. He's like, bro, you don't need to do that. Just drip your, you know, right through the middle. Just blow your juice like you like to and it won't leak. The thing is, Steve is right about that. You can just blow your juice into the middle of a Kennedy and because of those tubes it won't leak. I just, you know, old habits, hard to break. And I must say, like even on these very first, first runs of these Kennedys, the fit and finish, the machining has always been stellar. Sick as tits, even. And on the V1, you still get the that Kennedy click. All right, so enough yammering, let's do this. 0.26, I'll just leave it at 65 watts, pony on acid, Kennedy V1, boosh. Whoa, that is kind of a trip. It vapes, it vapes well. Great, real nice. It's got that nice Kennedy flavor. It's got that nice, I mean, Kennedy airflow. This is what started the Kennedy style airflow up directly at your coils. Kennedy was the first. Steve the machinist was the first. vaping like a champ. It's got that, it's got a weird airflow sound. Do you guys hear that weird airflow sound that's going on? There's like a, there's like a distinct sort of note, like a distinct tone to it. Great. I mean, shit, this is vaping awesome. I'm not gonna make that broad statement that it's vaping just as good as anything on my desk because it feels, you know, a, a little bit outdated. The airflow, the 510 drip tip, maybe it's because I built it and wicked it and so I know what's in there, but just the combination of like the round wire with the offset airflow, feels like I'm vaping like a little piece of, you know, vaping history right here. This RDA changed a lot in vaping. I mean, it introduced all new things, a whole new different type of airflow. Kennedy is still to this day made in in Southern California, in the United States, Steve the Machinist. And this is kind of one of those things like, you know, right now, especially, you know, and I'm not trying, this isn't a sales pitch for Steve the Machinist. Steve the Machinist and I have never worked together. Uh, I have no money has ever exchanged hands. Whenever he comes out with something new, he hits me up and asks if I want to try it. And I always say yes. And that's about the extent of the relationship between me and Steve the Machinist. But in a time like this, you know, during this pandemic and we're trying to help small businesses, Steve has been machining out of the United States, Southern California, since he started Kennedy Vapor. I couldn't think of a more, you know, made in the USA company right now than, than Kennedy. And they're, and they're still doing it. He's still at it, releasing, you know, really dope Kennedy stuff.
Oh my God, the snap, the Kennedy snap. So yeah, even though it's a little bit tall, you know, a little bit, a little bit dorky, a little. It's got that like big, tall, dorky five ten drip tip on there. Still vapes like a Kennedy, and that's uh, I think that's just awesome. That airflow, that loud airflow. Who knew? I never remember the Kennedy having that lead of airflow. One interesting thing about the Kennedy is the Kennedy never really got cloned very hard. I mean, I know there were Kennedy clones out there, but it didn't seem to be as rampant with the Kennedy as it did with other, you know, other RDAs. There was one clone of the Kennedy that I actually used for a little bit of time called uh, the Nixon, right? Kennedy, Nixon, which is very clever. And the Nixon was honestly, a fairly serviceable clone, clone of the Kennedy. Very similar vape experience from the Nixon and the Kennedy. Anyway, I just like, you know, I don't know. I like reminiscing about old vape stuff and old vape times, man. 2014, you know, you get the Kennedy in the mail and you don't know when you're vaping it, you don't think, well, this is gonna change the game. Like this is gonna inspire other RDAs and forever from here forward, people will always refer to things with Kennedy style airflow. It's just, I just find it incredibly interesting going back and having that like, it's like a time machine, right? It's you're, you're experiencing it with the exception of the liquid. I'm experiencing this now exactly as it was when I first got it. And it's still awesome. All right, well, damn. There you go, retro vaping. It's the Kennedy. I have a feeling, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, fortunately, maybe this is just gonna be one of those things that sticks around. You know, every once in a while I get a retro vaping or I get a weird random liquid tasting and I go, no, like you're gonna stick around. After the vlog is done and published and we've already watched it on Thursday and we're all in the chat and we're hanging out or, you know, and the podcast is already out, it's weeks past, Kennedy's probably still just gonna be hanging around. Probably still just gonna be hanging around. So yeah, that is uh, retro vapings. Now what do we wanna do? Huh, we always come to this point. I always like, you know, we come here and we go, shit, what do you wanna do? I don't know, how about this? How about just so I don't forget and have to shoehorn it in later, right now, let's do Getting to Know Grim Green. All right, well, it's time to do some, huh? Did you see it? Did you see it? All right, well, it's time to do a little bit of getting to know Grim Green. I like this segment. I get to, uh, you know, relax a little bit, take my Grim Green hat off, as it were. I mean, I'm not really gonna take my Grim Green hat off. Over the last few weeks in the getting to know Grim Green segment, we've been doing records. I've been collecting records and I got, you know, it's it's pitiful, right? It's a little bit of a pitiful record collection, but they're records that I, that I really, 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 really love. And there's a story behind all of these records. And today we're gonna do a record. Of course, there's a story behind it. Uh, it's, it's time to do a Clutch record. I often tell people that Clutch is just my favorite band of all time. And that's very true. But even with that being said, I don't love everything that Clutch has released. Even your favorite band of all time. And I feel like, I kind of feel like this is the mark maybe of like a true favorite band of all time. When you can look at your favorite band of all time and say, you guys, the stuff that you released that I love, I, I literally love more than any other music. And the stuff that you've released that I don't love, I just wish I couldn't have never heard it to begin with. That's kind of how I feel about Clutch. Every Clutch album, is a little bit weird and a little bit different. I feel like every single Clutch album, with the exception of one singular Clutch album, every Clutch album that I've experienced in my life is a little bit of a grower. It's a little bit of like a gamble. It's like, all right, here's a new Clutch record. Let's press play. Let's see what we're gonna get. And truly and honestly, Clutch is one of those bands, I always feel weird telling people like, oh, maybe you should check out Clutch. You might actually like Clutch. I always feel weird telling people to check out Clutch because Clutch is truly and honestly a little bit of like a difficult band to get into. They have a very unique and distinct sound. Neil Fallon, the singer of Clutch, he's got a very unique, distinct voice that I, I, I love. He's my favorite singer in rock music. Neil Fallon is a fucking boss. And like I said, 
said, every Clutch album that comes out, it's it's a little bit different. It's a little bit weird. Like they always have their roots in that like stoner rock, sort of stoner rock, southern fried rock kind of roots. But they throw all kinds of weird shit and stuff all over it. There's trombones on this album. The album that we're talking about today, I might as well just show it instead of being so vague about it. Clutch. This is The Elephant Riders. And when I say stoner rock, I mean it like stoner rock. This album is called The Elephant Riders, which Neil Fallon, I was reading an interview with Neil Fallon and he was talking about uh, when the band was recording this album, they were in West Virginia and he had never read about the Civil War or anything like that. And he started reading about the Civil War and getting really fascinated by it. And so he decided that they need to release this album called The Elephant Writers, which takes place in a fictional world where during the Civil War, they used elephants instead of horses, stone or rock. And the band's all on the front, Neil Fallon there, Riding an elephant dressed in Civil War garb, brandishing a clutch flag. Yeah, holy shit. Yeah, I mean, you, the, little young Neil Fallon right there. Now, the story of this particular clutch album isn't, you know, isn't amazing or anything like that. It does go back to the, to the box, to the Mark Moots box of burned CDs. And I will forever refer to Clutch the Elephant Riders in my mind as like the lost clutch album. So Clutch's discography is kind of crazy it's it's weird it's all over the place they have like a lot of studio albums but they release a lot of like b-side stuff and sometimes like their full-length album they released a full-length album called jam room which was kind of really more of a jam album but it was like a full length and they've got all sorts of like singles and b-sides and bootlegs and reissues and this particular album the elephant writers had like there were three different versions each that had their own secret song at the end of it with the exception of the japanese version of this album that had all three secret tracks on it so because of mark moots and because of the box i had kind of gotten into Clutch, and I consider myself lucky to have gotten into Clutch. I put in the Robot Hive album, which is still the album that I tell people, like if you, you wanna check out Clutch, check out Robot Hive Exodus. Like that's the, the Clutch banger album. Could be my favorite Clutch album. So I was lucky enough to get into Clutch on that album and, and really, really like it. Like I really, really loved Robot Hive Exodus. So I started kind of branching out, listening to other Clutch stuff, like new Clutch releases that came out. You know, Earth Rocker came out, it was just amazing. So I kind of dove into Clutch and thank you to Mark Moots for getting me into Clutch. And I kind of dove into Clutch and was listening to all of these albums. And then in that box, I came across the Elephant Riders. And I pulled it out and I was like, well, what's this? What's this Clutch album? What's this Clutch album? It was kind of like just a, a, a weird little surprise when you think you've listened to like the overwhelming majority of a band's catalog and then you pull a CD out that says Clutch the Elephant Riders and you go, I don't know what this is. What is this? Is this Clutch I've never heard before? How is this possible? So I ended up listening to Clutch the Elephant Riders and it, you know, it, awesome. Just a really great Clutch album and I'll kind of always refer to it. I know it's not really the lost Clutch album, but to me it was like the last Clutch album that I that I happened upon, that I came across. And it kind of will always stick out to me like that, especially since this particular Clutch album is a little uh, it, different. It's a little bit weirder than a lot of their other stuff. This Clutch album is, is is very groovy. It's very bluesy. Like I said, there's some trombones in some songs in here. Then I mean, come on, the Civil War with elephants. Good Lord, Clutch is just weird. But we're gonna be putting two songs from this Clutch record on the Spotify playlist, the GTKGG playlist, which will be linked down below in the description. But the two tracks that we're taking off this particular album is the title track, The Elephant Riders. Great title track, great start to this album. It just lays down that Clutch groove flawlessly, perfectly. It sets the tone for like the whole record. And then we're gonna be putting track five. This is my favorite song on this record, The Soap Makers on the playlist. And I feel like The Soap Makers is one of those th songs that really embodies clutch. It's got all, it's got a bunch of their like unique sounds in it. It's got Neil Fallon's you really unique vocal styling over it. Differences between the, the, the between the verse and the chorus are really great. It's just it's a banger. It's a banger. I'm just going to say it. The Soap Makers it's a banger. So yeah, there you go. Clutch, Elephant Riders. This album came out in uh, 1996. 
97, I believe, 1997 or 1998, which in that time, when I was in 1997, 1998, I had no interest in Clutch. Clutch couldn't have been further off of my musical radar at that time. But it's Clutch, it's the Elephant Riders, great album, and I'm gonna throw those two tracks, those two bangers, on the GTKGG playlist on Spotify, which I'll have linked down below. So yeah, albums, just albums and albums. And I got albums and albums to choose from. And every album, yeah, has a story. All right, cool. Well, what I think I'm going to do right now is uh, I, I got an RDA all ready to go. I got a goon all ready to go. I have the bottle. It's time for a very random liquid tasting. Lunar Sweet Mango is the liquid we're going to be tasting today. This comes from Indonesia. I believe this is the very last Indonesian e-liquid that I got from Beecher. So shout out, huge shout out to Coiltered Beecher. Thank you for bringing me home some liquids to taste on the vlog here. This comes from Vape Zoo. This is Lunar Sweet Mango. Vape Zoo, same company that did the Tokyo banana, the Tokyo banana from last week that I actually kept vaping. I continued vaping it for a few more days and then it got it got like less and less. I would I would vape it and I'm, where's that banana? You know, and I'd go find it and I'd have a few pulls and I'd be like, all right, that I'm I'm set. I'm all set with that. And I'd set it down and whatever, I'd go about my day and vape and live my life. And then I'd think again, where, where's that banana? I'd come in here, have a few pulls, and that got to be like less and less and less. And then eventually, like I came in and I had a few pulls and I was like, okay, I'm officially completely over this weird coffee cake Kahlua banana menthol liquid. But today we got Lunar Sweet Mango. And I, you know what? I don't even know what to expect anymore from any vape zoo juices or any Indonesian juices. I felt like that Tokyo banana last week should have been like pretty straightforward, but it wasn't. It had all sorts of really unique and interesting flavors added into it. I just have a feeling that a lot of these Indonesian juices are that interesting, different from what, and I mean, that's just, a, that's, it's just a regional thing, I'm assuming, because the same thing happens when you go anywhere else in the world, you know, juices in the UK are, are different. They have a different flavor profile overall than juices that like come out of the United States as compared to juices that come out of like the Philippines or juices that come out of Indonesia. They're all, you know, geographically, they have their own unique sort of regional flavors and interesting things added into them. So I'm really interested based on what all what I've already had from Vape Zoo. I'm interested to see how this mango goes. If this mango is going to be a straightforward mango or if it's going to be some like interesting sideways mango. Oh, yeah, it's going to be a weird sideways mango, isn't it? I got mango. There's like a there's definitely culotta, some sort of cooling in this. I don't know if uh, vapors in Indonesia are just big fans of that. Kind of makes sense. Most of the Indonesian liquids I've got have had that culotta sort of component to them. Well, I mean, it doesn't bother me. I actually really like it. I just think, again, you know, geographically, it's interesting. Mango, spiciness, Culotta for sure. Um, I, like I said, I, I dug out a goon. I dug out a goon for this liquid tasting. This is the titanium goon with a little DHD chop top on there sitting on top of Tropicana. That's the Aspen Modco Tropicana. I just love the crap out of this setup and I especially like this drip tip because the majority, I'm just, I'm just gonna explain to you like my matchy matchy logic right now. The most unimportant thing ever. My matchy matchy logic on this was, okay, the Monarch is mostly pink. It's clear with some dark gray in a few places and then this cool black cap. So titanium goon, sure. This smoky drip tip chop top is gonna match really well with like the gray smokiness of the certain parts of this mod rather than having pink on top, which I would like to do, but I don't have a pink drip tip. Went with gray, there you go. That's the full matchy matchy setup. Way to be real matchy matchy there, Nick. Just gonna juice up these coils. <laughs> have I done that too many times in the vlog? I feel like there's been many vlogs I've pulled my glasses down to look over them, to juice or build or something. 
And I kind of do one of these. I used to work with this girl, Dawn, at Starbucks who wore her glasses like this. It was crazy. We'd be working on the drive through together, like at a Starbucks retail store. And her glass would just be, I mean, just barely just on the tip of her nose. But she was farsighted. So she'd have to look at you through her glasses. And she always did like this face, you know, where she just looked at you like, through her glasses real low. I actually don't know why I told that story. Anyway, here we go. Monarch, goon, sweet mango, vapors. All right, I'm just gonna have an inaugural toot here to kind of see, you know, first impressions, lunar sweet mango. Yeah, okay, of course it's weird. Of course it's weird. And I don't mean that in like a, a disrespectful kind of weird. It's just weird to my conservative Western sensibilities. Wow, there's a lot going on in this liquid. Uh, Indonesian vapors ha must have a hard on for really complex liquids. Everything I've had from Indonesia so far is just complex as fuck. Just layers and layers and layers of flavor. It's not like, you know, in the United States when you get rocket blast and it's like strawberry blue raz. This isn't just mango. This isn't just a mango or a few mangoes. There's a lot going on here. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do what I always do. I'm just gonna sit back with this for a hot minute. I'm gonna vape it. We'll come back, I'll give you my thoughts on it. Cue the music. Okay, 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 wow. That is, uh, I don't know, maybe Beecher's playing a little bit of a joke on me again. That is incredibly mentholated, incredibly culotta menthol. It's one of those punishing menthols where even right now, when I inhale, I get like brain freeze. It's just freezing, freezing cold culotta. Stay hydrated, hydro homies. Just punishing punishing menthol. It's mango and it's like it's like the most complete I hate to use the word comprehensive, but it's it's like the most complete comprehensive mango flavor ever. It doesn't it's not just mango. You know how you have a mango and it's like the high chews and you're like oh, it's mango. It tastes like mango or you have like a mango liquid and you're like that's definitely like a mango. This is this is all of the mango. This is the mango fruit. When I'm vaping this, I can smell like the peel of the mango, like the pit of the mango has a different flavor and it's a little bit more tart and it's got like a different sort of like flavor and texture to it and the skin has like sort of a, a different smell and flavor and texture to it. I'm getting somehow all of that in this. There's gotta be multiple mango flavorings in this. And I believe, I believe to get that effect, I think there's papaya in this. I think it's mango and papaya. Although the papaya, I feel like is at a, is at a very, very low percentage. Papayas generally in e-liquids are bad. They just taste bad. They taste bad like I don't know, whatever gross, bad you can think of. Barf vomit. Barf and vomit are the same thing. Poop barf, I don't know, bad. Just kind of gross, funky, musty, don't dig the flavor. This, the papaya and the mango together with that like, there's culotta and menthol in this for sure. And then there is some sort of like spicy component that I can't, I don't even know how you would get it. I don't, I don't know. It's wizardry. It's just fucking witchcraft. Yeah, it's delicious. It's mango, it's papaya. There's like this spicy earthiness and then culotta. Just tons of menthol and culotta. I can still feel it. 
in my mouth right now. It's not quite as punishing as that other liquid. There was the other Indonesian liquid that had the bursting uh, fruit on it. What was it called? Sop, sop, sopbua, sopbua. Yes, the sopbua was w crazy menthol. Pure punishment. That menthol was pure punishment. This menthol is a lot less pure punishment. It's not, you know, you're not being waterboarded with menthol. I taste that papaya more and more. Thankfully, it's papaya mango. If this was just papaya, if this was lunar sweet papaya, no, it'd be a hard pass for me, but it's not. It's lunar sweet mango. It's mango papaya. It's menthol. Damn. You know, you vapors in Indonesia, you, you, you know how to, you have some delicious liquids. You know how to make a delicious liquid. Wow. What a trip. What a trip. All right. Well, I, I really like this. I'm going to keep vaping it. Uh, it's going to be one of those liquids, you know, that just, it's going to sit in the setup and it's going to be a lot like that Tokyo banana. I'm just going to crave it every once in a while. I may come back in here, have a few pulls, be good and satisfied, then get on with my life. I have a feel, this is, I'm just going to want to come back to this. I'm thinking about it right now. I want to vape it right now. It's my vlog. I am. Wow. I legitimately wish I was better at describing things, you know, because there's a lot going on in this liquid and I'm not even scratching the surface of what it tastes like. Menthol is what it tastes like. Menthol, mango, papaya. How many more times can I say menthol, mango, papaya in this segment? The answer is one. Mango, menthol, papaya. So yeah, now that we're done with that, mango, menthol, papaya, two. I think we're going to, good Lord, where are we at? Where are we at in the vlog right now? This, this can't be it. This can't be the end. Dang. All right, well, we're getting close to the end. We're gonna start wrapping this here vlog up. Uh, it's time to do it. Favorite comments of the week. Oh God, I wore my dorky glasses this whole vlog. Why didn't anybody tell me? These are my least favorite glasses. I have three pairs of glasses. I have another black pair of glasses that's like, my glasses that I just wear. They're my lifelong glasses. I love them. And then I have a nice pair of glasses that's like, you know, my, oh, the glasses I was married in, you know, nice glasses. And then I have these freaking plastic beater glasses. They're made from like, you know, recycled bottle caps or whatever. And they just look so fucking dorky. I just feel like a dork. Anyway, we're gonna wrap this here vlog up with some freaking favorite comments of the week. Oh, that's right. All right, first favorite comment of the week uh, from Twisted Toast here. He said, uh, that's Dante's peak. Volcano had Tommy Lee Jones. Yes, that's right. I forgot, I was getting my Volcano movies mixed up. You know, good old reliable Hollywood, they always used to do that thing. I mean, used to, they still do. Remember, it's like, you know, uh, Deep Impact come out and Armageddon. It's like, oh, two meteor movies in the same year. And then it's like A Bug's Life and Ants came out. And it's like, oh, two animated bug movies in the same year. For some reason, we had the year of Dante's Peak and Volcano, one with Tommy Lee Jones. Pierce Brosnan was Dante's peak. I can't believe I got my volcano disaster movies mixed up. Anyway, Twisted Toast, thank you for the clarification on that. <laughs> Had another uh, favorite comment of the week from Jen. So I, I, I fulfilled the subscriber request, uh, subscriber request, uh, blind, blind, blind eyes, snow blind, blind drive. What was his name? Silent Drive. Silent Drive made a humble Grim Green request and said, hey, you should do another video where you swap the coils in those RTAs. And so I said, Silent Drive, yeah, sure, I can do that. Yes, of, of course, reasonable requests will always be filled. And so Jen's favorite comment of the week, now that we could demand, how about getting to that new reload RTA, Nick? Yes, absolutely, demand away. I will be getting to that. In fact, after I read Jen's comment, I got that new Reload Vapor RTA out because I was going to build it in the vlog if we didn't get anything cool in the vape mail. But we did, we got the rye in the vape mail. So now this is not built yet, but look, I'm gonna build it today. I'll get right on this for you, Jen. Reasonable requests can be accommodated. Got another favorite comment of the week here from Mr. 
Fazy? Question. I have COPD. I've been smoke free for six to seven years now. So I have a question. I sometimes tell after I've done my breathing treatment, which is albuterol, if I vape a lot, my chest tightens. So what's your take? Or do you know of anyone who might have same symptoms like mine? Thank you for all you do and our rights. Uh, Mr. Fazy, um, I am not a doctor. Definitely not a doctor. Just, just definitely not a doctor. Um, I don't know. I don't know, and I'm not a doctor. Here's what I do know. I know that Dr. Ricardo Peloza released a study last year showing the effects of COPD in vapors, uh, improving, reversing the effects of COPD. I'll post a link to that study down in the description, but beyond that, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. Could be a PG allergy. If you're a little bit sensitive to PG, you might try a heavier VG liquid other than that. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. Don't don't take my medical advice. Um, don't take my medical advice. Don't even. I've never 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 studied up on albuterol. Albuterol. Albut. Come on. Albuterol. Never studied up on it. Don't know anything about it. Uh, sorry. Sorry, Mr. Fazy. Sorry, I hope someone, maybe someone else has uh, an answer for your question. Maybe it'll be in the comments down below. Ah, yes. In fact, let's look up this Bible verse. Yeah, I got, I got another favorite comment of the week here from uh, someone who goes by Axe1341. 40 year smoker, two packs of Marlboro Reds a day, over three years smoke free. Vaping changed my life. This was just a really great comment that I saw on one of my videos recently that I thought, damn it, what a, what a great success story. You know, there are literally millions and millions of these similar success stories. 40 year smoker, 30 year smoker, 20 year smoker, you know, smoked a pack a day, smoked two packs a day. Thanks to vaping, four years smoke free. I love a good success story and I love uh, Acts 1341. Look you scoffers, wonder and perish. For I am going to do something in your days that you would have never believed, even if someone told you. That's the New International Version. Is there a better version? The King James. Behold, ye despairers, and wonder and perish. For I work and work in your days, a work which ye shall no wise believe, though a man declare it unto you. That's a good one. I don't know the context of that, Acts 1341, but uh, congratulations. 40-year smoker. Three years smoke free. Awesome, congratulations. Oh, I guess I had to pick one that was like a, you know, hater comment. All right, well, what say you, Steve Stogen? I know one thing for certain, a guy with a throat tattoo will certainly help the cause. I love vaping, it saved my life most likely. I am an executive in a major company, but why does every person who promotes this have to fit every stereotype they want us to fit into? Not helping the cause. Fuck you. Uh, Steve, you can eat shit, you non-contributing nothing. Look, I'm trying the best I can. When I got this Stormtrooper throat tattoo, I didn't know that a few years down the road, I'd have to be arguing with politicians on Twitter, but we work with what we got. What are you doing, Steve, to help vaping? I just, I wonder what Steve's doing to help vaping. I wonder, I wonder how Steve's doing up there in his ivory white tower. Just handing down advice. You're not helping, you're not helping. Maybe you need to get over your own insecurities and hangups about what people look like, Steve. Anyway, Steve can eat shit and that right there, ah, that's the end, favorite comments of the week. I wanna give a, a very huge shout out, you know his name, Jeremy V. He, he, he's been helping me out, he's been helping me get some favorites comments of the week, so I, I appreciate you, Jeremy V. Even though you didn't have to do the timestamps this week, Still appreciate you. Still, still appreciate this Lunar Sweet Mango too. Hi, I'm Steve. I work at a major company. I am a pretty big deal. You guys didn't know I'm Steve. I have no tattoos. Ah, uh, did I mention that I work for a major company? You're not helping Steve. God, if only we could all be more like <laughs> Steve. Ah, dang. You know what? You know what, Steve? I think we're uh, I think we're done here with the vlog. Let me just take one quick look around the room and make sure I didn't forget anything. Oh, man, I don't think so, you guys. I think we're good. So damn it, you know what? 
thank you guys, seriously, uh, so much for watching, except Steve. Steve can still eat shit. The rest of you guys, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And you guys, you know, I always say this, but you guys that make it here to the end of the vlog, you're literally just my favorite people on earth. If I ever get the chance to meet you in real life, I owe you either a crisp high five or a hug, or you know, there's there's combo deals of both. It's kind of up to the consumer. And since it's Thursday night, I'm gonna say that's what she said. And the vape team are coming up tonight, at 7 p.m. Go and go and watch them. Go and watch both of them. Open both streams at the same time. Anyway, woo! All right. Well, that's what I got for today, everybody. Thank you, seriously, so much for watching. And remember, no matter what anybody tells you, anybody, even anybody in the chat over here, no matter what anybody tells you, especially fucking Steve. Absolutely, you guys. Let's keep on vaping. Be excellent to each other. Peace.